So one of my favorite things about being a deal maker and merger specialist is it's allowed me to live anywhere in the world. So for the last decade, I've lived um, uh, in a lot of different countries uh, outside of the U.S. And I haven't talked much about that, but I've been putting together a couple of videos of my most recent places, you know, living a year in Buenos Aires, living a year in Lima, Peru. Um, I'll probably go back to living a few years in Medellin. Uh, but some of the things that I've learned and how I've leveraged uh, just, you know, do things to do business and get business deals. A lot of you know I'm, a, I'm a part of a hotel in Medellin. But today I want to do a quick video as an intro to some of this uh, travel stuff. And I want to get y'all's opinion on if this was okay or if this was like a terrible thing. It's like, Ace, hey, why did you do this? So let me know if y'all are going to let me slide or if, you know, let me know your thoughts, your opinion on this. Now, one of the things about Buenos Aires is there's uh, actually a lot of racism. <laughs> so it has a very racist history. They were uh, excited to welcome in the Nazis and make a lot of the Nazis uh, a part of their government, give them safe haven. So uh, it was even rumored, which I don't think they found evidence, that like they even helped uh, Hitler, gave, gave him a place to stay, but they were just known to be this place where they not only invited the, the Nazis after the war, but made them really high up in government. And so it just created some very treacherous situations. Just to give you a sense, like uh, Blacks were like 30% of the population at one point. Um, the Nazis came in and, and just together with the government drove that down to now 1%. And I'll talk a little bit about the history uh, once I talk in that, in that video, but a, a lot of racism. Some people are like, oh, Ace, why would you go to a place that is so racist and live there? It's like, dude, I grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> there, there's a lot of racism there. It's not like I'm going to uh, escape racism in, in, in America. So, um, but I think that one of the things that I learned growing up in, in uh, Tennessee, in the, in the Deep South, for, for some of you that are outside of, of the U.S., and the Deep South is notoriously uh, has systematic uh, racism, which it just you just realize, okay, wow, I can figure out ways to leverage this uh, and, you know, kind of just the foundations of what became my creative thinking as a uh, deal maker. Man, just even some of the stories get me getting started in business and trying to buy, uh, uh, doing different deals. Uh, I should tell a, a story about buying this um, business from, from this guy who uh, basically <laughs> said, you've got to be a drug dealer if you're buying these businesses, you know, just that kind of stuff. But so Argentina. You know, what I, I had this apartment, it's in, you know, it's a beautiful place. I loved it. Um, and, you know, it's in uh, kind of, I guess, their downtown in an area called Puerto Madero, but it was in a, another part of Puerto Madero called Micro Center. And it was beautiful. I loved it. Some really great restaurants, cafes. Um, you know, when you're location independent, it's important to have all of that kind of around where, where you are. So, um, I had this restaurant that was like really great views, you know, kind of expensive and, and all that. And, um, you know, the first time I went there, I just didn't get service. So, uh, you know, it's like waving people down. So I would come over like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get somebody to you. And they just nobody ever came. So I was like, oh, like, OK, that's weird. But okay, whatever. So but it was like right next to my place. So I'm passing there another day. It's like, OK, let me go in again. And, and so I'm talking to some, a friend from there and he's like, yeah, like, especially if they, cause it was a nicer place. They had all older male waiters. So every, it was kind of older and male. And so I'm telling a friend uh, there uh, about the situation. It's like, yeah, if they're older, <laughs> they're, I hate to tell you, but they're probably racist. <laughs> and, uh, and the younger generation there is, is tends to be pretty cool. There, there could be issues, whatever. But so I'm like, okay, well, dang. That sucks because I was excited to try this restaurant. They just literally just would not serve me. So I ended up realizing, because, you know, I'm dating down there and, and doing that kind of thing. And so the downside to dating, if you're an American and you're in some of these other countries, it's like, as soon as they, they, you know, they click on your own Bumble, it's like, oh, snap. Like, I'm going to get this guy to take me to an amazing restaurant. I'm about to, like, <laughs> go in on him. And, uh, you know, you just get, you, you've got to kind of filter out, all right, is this like a gold digger situation or, or whatever. And, and so that can get annoyed if they're just like, yo, you just you know, like, because I'm going to go to nice places. I like going to nice places. So I'm like, that's just where I'm going to go or where I want to be. I want to be in a nice atmosphere, et cetera. So, if, and then if I take them to where I want to tend to go, and they're going to want to go just, you know, some, if they're going to, they're going to go into the, the 
and once you sit down with a person, you can get a vibe for kind of who they who they are and, and that kind of thing. And so this became kind of my dating hack, leveraging racism. And if you've heard my other uh, video on uh, just how I use deal making in my personal life. Um, and, you know, turned a storage unit I had and spent over five years, like $20-something thousand into now equity and uh, a, a every big business that pays me every month. And so, like, that kind of thinking is what I'm always trying to get y'all to leverage. And even within, you know, uh, Good Merger and AAC, what I'm trying to drive into uh, each person's kind of business um, is this creative thinking and so I was like, man, you know what I can do? I can start to take my dates to the racist restaurant. <laughs> and it's great because I'll get to sit there. I'm going to get to tell them, hey, we're going to go to this really nice place. Like, this is where I want to take you. Da, da, da. Um, and I get to go. It's still an amazing atmosphere. Like, everything's beautiful. Everything's really nice. And um, I, they're going to kind of come and obviously, like, we're not gonna be able to order anything <laughs> because the people would, are not gonna go in service. And so I didn't know, I still like, after the first day, I didn't know if this plan was really gonna work or not, but it was just kind of a theory. It's like, cause maybe if I'm with an Argentinian girl, they are going to um, come in service. So I was like, all right, like I'm gonna try this out just to see. Cause I was kind of iffy about this girl. It's like, ah, I wanna see, you know, what the vibe is like. Uh, and then the other part was it, the more thing, the bigger thing isn't even what they order. The bigger thing was the amount of time. If you sit down on a first date and you don't like the person and you've like ordering food and then you got to like wait on the food. And if you're in a nice place and it's taking, it's going to take them a while and you got like different courses and all this stuff. And so it's, it was, for me, it was like more about the time I can sit down with this person. I can see like, What's the vibe? We aren't going to be able to order anything. And so then in about 30, 45 minutes, I can tell them because I was always happy to get the Uber. So I was like, yo, like, I wouldn't say like, oh, this sucks. I'm out of here. But it's like, yo, like, oh, man, like, it's been a long time. I don't know what's going on. The service here, this is, they got such rate, the good ratings. I don't understand why the service is so bad here <laughs> as we sit in the racist restaurant. So, um, you know, I would just tell her, hey, you know, sorry, like, that the food didn't work out, but you know, if it's a bad vibe, hey, I'm gonna get you an Uber. We can try this another time and maybe we'll find a restaurant where we can actually get served. And if on the other hand, the vibe was good, then I'd say, hey, they're taking forever, but I'm really enjoying spending time with you. Let's bounce to another restaurant um, where it wasn't racist and we could get served. So I'm curious, you know, I, it, that story came to me as I'm like putting together uh, kind of this, this travel series. Two things. Number one, do you want to hear about travel and kind of some of my travel hacks that probably are completely out there? Because <laughs> some of my travel hacks are how to leverage racism. <laughs> so let me know if that's something that y'all are interested in. I'm always just trying to see where y'all want me to take things. Um, you know, thanks for the response on the meditation video. That was kind of fun for me to be able to talk a little bit about. I'm happy to go into that more. Um, but, and you know, this came up because shout out to Andrew. He just uh, was on a trip, did Bogota, Medellin. So it's just awesome talking to him about being overseas. And I think that is a very big benefit to, especially becoming a merger specialist. You know, for him, obviously, with the deals that he's doing, he's able to do those from anywhere on the planet Earth and, um, you know, was, was still kind of working and but still, you know, what else, one of the cool things, like I'm still coming back really refreshed. And sometimes just working from a different place is refreshing. You know, it's like a workcation that still allows you to change your atmosphere, get another vibe, still get some rest and then come back energized and, and ready to, to um, do some more cool things. So uh, I love, you know, I've got friends that are coming overseas and I just love getting more people um, outside of the, the U.S. I feel like, you know, we're born on the planet Earth. We're not just born in the city or state that we happen to live in as, as kids. And so it's really important to explore the planet. So let me know if I want some more of my off the wall travel hacks and let me know if I was completely wrong in my uh, racism leveraging. Um, if you're interested in becoming a merger specialist, hit us up, goodmerger.com.
gmail.com. We've also got some other cool deals coming down the pipe. Got some amazing, got the second media mogul training that's coming up in October um, for um, folks that are interested in kind of buying up um, social media. As y'all know, I'm not big into trying to build a big audience from scratch. I would rather go and build a target audience that I need to get access to for the business that I'm trying to grow. And so we're gonna be doing that training uh, on becoming a mini media mogul. You can become your own version of uh, Rupert Murdoch, regardless of what you think about his politics. Pretty smart businessman <laughs> and became an incredible media mogul. Just cobbling together little deals. All right, talk to y'all soon.